morning everyone. I just want to show you how lovely Kelso in the Scottish Borders is. There's the abbey at the top there. It was actually destroyed by angry English armies in the 1500s. Out of spite, obviously, because uh, you're all meant to worship the same god, aren't you? So we come round. I'm stood on the, the old bridge coming into Kelso. And this is the River Tweed. So clean, so full of salmon. So lovely. And we look up past there, there's Flores Castle. Now, it's not actually a castle. It's a country mansion built in the mid 1800s by a very rich man to look like a medieval castle. Because why not? I would as well. It's kind of like that neoclassical uh, castle that they were advertising in the estate agent in uh, Edinburgh. But here you go, guys. This is uh, Kelso, the Scottish borders in the sunshine. And if you're feeling a bit depressed, a bit torn to pieces by city living and decay and crackheads and protests and structural racism, just come out here to the Scottish borders. Go anywhere beautiful in Scotland, whether you're black, white, Chinese, Hindu, Jewish, Nobody in the countryside cares as long as you're just a nice person. And that's the way it should be. This is the timeless way. Once the fever of everything being bad, of everything being homophobic and racist is over, then we will revert to remembering that there's only really three things that matter in this world. Love, the greatest force in the universe, beauty, which is aesthetics, which is patterns. Your brain is built for pattern recognitions. And the last thing, of course, is truth. Because only by being honest and speaking the truth can you actually appreciate love and beauty. Here's the wee bridge house at the uh, end of the Kelso Bridge. Now, there was some pillar chat in the comments section. I got corrected. Uh, in terms of pillars, these are Doric pillars. The pillars I was pointing at on uh, Henderson Row in Edinburgh, next to my old school, they were Ionic, the spiral ones. I mistakenly called them Corinthian. Now, Corinthian-style pillars are very much more ornate and complicated. So there you go. There's some good pillar chat to, to kick off for Friday morning. And we look again, let's do a little zoom in, see if it maintains a bit of a focus. There you go. Floors Castle. Epic grounds. There's a, a kind of 20 mile wall around it. Total circumference. There's so much natural beauty in this world that it can be overwhelming at times. You sometimes have to catch your breath at how the natural world that just does it automatically. It's uh, it's tied in with efficiency and uh, it's the path of least resistance. It's beautiful. Good morning, everyone. Bit squinty, bit sunny. Uh, we're here in Kelso in the Scottish borders. It's a fantastically sunny Friday morning. You've got Kelso Abbey behind me. I'm gonna show you guys around. Thank you so much for enjoying the Edinburgh video. Kelso is a baby Edinburgh, and I'll show you why. We'll go and have a look. That is as blue as blue can get. I challenge you to find the bluer blue, the perfection of the ozone, reflecting only blue, absorbing all the other colors. And the ozone also absorbs a lot of those cosmic radiation rays that, uh, but just look at that blue. Cerulean blue, stunning blue. The River Tweed is world famous for how clean, how beautiful, 
and how full of salmon and trout and I guess other game fish it is. Now I'm going to try and find you some anglers. There's one. Don't know what that stick is. Is that a fishing rod? I know nothing about angling. We're going to come along the riverside, see if we can uncover his camouflage buddies. Let's see. Tell me if you see any more anglers. They're going for it. And you stick around long enough, you will see very happy men pulling out magnificent fish from this river. Remember those walls I built? Baby, they're tumbling down. I see a halo. You know when you're following a vehicle and you get some epic final destination vibes? Uh, not gonna get too close. Good morning, everyone, from Driki, Driki. Kelso, it's uh, miserable. Uh, the weather's back to normal here in the Scottish borders. Um, I managed to get a bit of sunshine yesterday, which you'll see, or if you have seen, depending which order I edit this in. But behind me is the town hall. Now, a few of you commented that my accent's become a bit more Scottish since being here. Great! I fit in around here. The, the Veach family's been in this region in uh, southern Scotland for proven, proven, 700 years, probably for about a thousand years. So here, I'm not a complete stranger. I belong. I have heritage. Everywhere else I've been, you know, when you're like half Brazilian, half Scottish, you don't belong anywhere. You get sent to boarding school, which wrecks you. I mean, okay, boarding school, just 30 miles from where my heritage is from. But anyway. Whew. Okay, we're gonna walk through to Kelso Abbey. It's like a thousand year old structure that was wrecked by King Edward's army when he came up and there was all the Scottish-English wars which created this animosity. Which reminds me, that's another reason I'm not so much into Scottish nationalism. I mean, Scottish identity, Scottish heritage, of course. I wear the tweed, I eat the haggis, I'm gonna teach myself to like whiskey. Um, so we're gonna go to Kelso Abbey. Just want to say a couple of things. Had to stop there because I, I actually lost my train of thought. Oh, I just got sprayed by the bastard. That puddle behind. He just, anyway, lost my train of thought again. I'm, I'm not even a stoner anymore. Hold on. Right, I got it. I got it. So been getting quite a good response on some videos recently that aren't to do with. Uh, my old style of saving the world in it, or activism, or this or that, or a critical look at uh, Manchester and the crackheads. There's so much more to life. Let's concentrate on the positives. I mean, whew, I'm such in the gutter right now anyway. All I can do is look up. So let's look up together. Oh, that way there, Kelso Abbey. It was a monastery or an abbey. I don't know what the difference is, but uh, absolutely wrecked by the English. You'd think it's like uh, like ancient uh, Roman ruins, but no, it shouldn't be that wrecked. It's been literally dismantled and ripped apart by, by the English, and that's fine. Goes to show, you know, you know that meme of the astronaut holding a gun to the bottom, to the back of the other smaller astronaut's head, and he's like, oh, it, it wasn't about worshipping Jesus. And the astronaut with a gun goes, it never was. It's always been about tribal fighting, ideological fighting, power, who gets to run this, who gets to run that. I'm walking towards nothing here. Let's go back. Let's get another look. All right, right now, next to the Abbey, I'm in the dead center of Kelso. <laughs> All right, I 
everyone. Here we go. I got it wrong. It wasn't King Edward. It was actually the Earl of Hartford in 1545 who wrecked it. That's what it used to look like. Now it's a wreck. I don't know why he didn't completely demolish it and use the stones. I mean, that's all good stone to build something else. I don't know. Maybe it's uh, he left it up pour encourager les autres. So, okay. 1128, 900 years ago, David the first, blah, 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 blah. James the third is crowned, blah, blah, blah. Earl of Hartford, look at that guy. Doesn't he look like a bag of fun? And then in 1587, did they... Oh no, the Scottish Parliament declared the hail monkis of the monastery of the Abbey of Kelso are deceased. Does that mean that they're all deed? They're all deceased. Bathtub shaped like a coffin. What could possibly go wrong? Go on kids, get in the fucking coffin, have a bath. Now, of course, we don't know whether the floor I'm stood on is the original floor height, but the doorways, that would probably have been a really high doorway for the dwarfy Scots back in the day. I don't think they had very much six foot five Scotsmen back in the day, though you never know that whole Viking Norse influence of very tall people. Is that why the Dutch are tall? Because of the Vikings came and settled in the Netherlands? And I wasn't even filming. I just did a massive rant. Press stop instead of play. I was saying, just look at that. Some of the detail here from 11, from the 1100s, 900 years ago. To think someone halfway back to Christ was uh, carving away. It's amazing, the history of, of Scotland. And it's always, you know, a nice thing. It's always pleasant to be Scottish when uh, the Scottish were vastly overrepresented in the British Empire because of the qualities of the Scots. Uh, Edinburgh, where we were just the other day, was the beginning. That was the uh, ground zero. That was the singularity for the European Enlightenment, which then spread to England and Germany and all the idealists there. But it came from Edinburgh, people like David Hume banging on about moral sentiments, doing the right thing. Pretty cool stuff. Check out how sandstone fades away, right? This one's from 1841 or soon after. Henry Elliot, Lieutenant General, look at this. He spent 20 years in the Caribbean. And like, one thing a Scotsman's like is uh, sunshine, coconuts, and uh, pina coladas. And he was there in the zealous discharge of the duties of Deputy Lieutenant and the Justice of the Peace Blah, 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 very good. But look look at this, look at that. Look at that, how it's uh, crumbling. That's not gonna last, no one can read that. And anyway, the ones which are 900 years old, look, look at them, That's, it's, it's um, like something out of a horror movie. I'm getting H.R. Geiger vibes from the Alien franchise. No, not, not so much this one, this again, you know, a bit of the ancient Greece harking back there, of course, with the uh, triangle at the top and the, but yeah. Epic, changeless, but at the same time, always fading away. Entropy is devouring it all. Just some random gravestones. Muir House, Muir House Law. Robert Ferguson Farmer, Muir House Law. All right, people, bit of widescreen. A little bit of um, phone case interference in the corner, but hey, deal with it. There's your Kelso Abbey. There's also a Melrose Abbey, not too far from here, very similar. There's Jedburgh Abbey. All of them absolutely twatted by the English when they came through here and, uh, and, and, uh, and had their battles. I've been thinking a lot about why we're all so unhappy. Our physical stresses are nothing compared to how they were 500 years ago, even 300 years ago. Now compare that to when we were living in the wild, hunter-gatherers with a 50% infant mortality rate. It's no wonder we develop technology and progress and civilization and division of labor, which allows art, medicine, pharmaceuticals, communication, travel. It's no wonder we did these things because look, all it took, well, who the hell is going to accept one dead child when you don't need that sort of shit? So society progressed, like, 
It's taken me 20 years to shake off this idea of anarcho-primitivism. You know, it's, it's throwing the baby out with the bathwater and, and I'm gonna tie it into why we're all so sad, why we're all unhappy. You might remember 10 years ago at the start of the Arab Spring, there was a, a young Tunisian market stall guy in central Tunis. He'd set up his little stall selling vegetables or trinkets or whatever he was selling. Didn't have the right permit. And what did the police officer do? Threw all his shit in the street. Just treated them like a piece of shit. Threw his table over and said, now you don't have a permit, fuck off you little pleb. And that was it, like literally two sparks happened, that guy, he'd had enough. He did uh, what that monk did outside the American embassy in Vietnam, if I remember my history. He self-immolated, he covered himself in gasoline, the Tunisian young man, and set himself alight. And that's where he was at. Now that sacrifice, that obviously struck a chord with the billion or so people across the Arab world and, and then the Arab Spring happened. Now, tied in with the, obviously the progress of civilization comes something else. Comes a tremendous lack of dignity when the systems, you know, we all evolved, you know, from the dawn of time, from the, on an infinite time scale, it's nature, 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 natural fractals, natural patterns. The seasons, the rain, the sunshine, the plants, the animals, the rocks, the caves, all natural, all the patterns, all natural. And we lived in that and we were attuned to that. And when really bad things happened, like a flood or getting struck by lightning or disease, or you fall off a cliff and break your neck and no one can fix you. You kind of accepted it in a kind of dignified manner because there's no one to blame. No one's stupidity, no one's anger, no one's hubris led you to suffer that accident. It's literally the, the trials and tribulations of the natural world that all the mammals, all the reptiles, all the animals live under that. They don't blame anyone, but with society, and there's that great Seinfeld meme, we live in a society. When things go wrong, it's because of incompetence, it's because of corruption, it's because of greed, it's because of dehumanization. I mean, this morning I woke up and oh, more pictures out of Western China and the Uyghur region, the Turkic people, they're ethnically Turkish, they're Muslims, and they're getting put in concentration camps literally by the millions. And you know, at the end of World War II, we said never again, that's not a noun, it's a, it's a verb. You have to never again it, again and again. And as someone that was seriously affected by Schindler's List and the little girl in the red dress, and to think that that shit's happening in 2020 in China, and people are still praising China. Oh, look how well they coped with the virus. I mean, if you ran a 100% secure police state, yeah, you can deal with a virus. You can force all your inmates to stay in their cells, which is what they did. So I'm seeing a lot of people praising China. Oh, if only we had a bit more authority like China. It messes you up. The modern world messes you up. For all the advancements we have of technology and medicine and education and travel and filming on smartphones, we are literally cogs in the machine at times. And it drives us, us mad. You can see in America, the big problem with school shootings. America, God bless America with the SSRI antidepressants, with the psychotropic medication, with the neurological fixing. And people go mad and they end up committing atrocities. And it's not just America. Look at France from the statements of Emmanuel Macron this morning, saying that France is fighting Islamism, crisis of Islamism within France. Remember Bataclan? 150 young people machine gunned for no reason. Remember Nice? 84 men, women and little kids, babies and prams run over by a truck for no reason. 
people lash out. And just contrast that to the young Tunisian guy who sacrificed himself. But in our society, when people go insane, they sacrifice other people. I don't know where I'm going with this. I just wanted to speak a bit. I mean, life is hard. Thank you to everyone that sent me funding. Thank you to everyone that supports this. Thank you to all my new subscribers and my new viewers. Really enjoyed shooting the Edinburgh stuff. This one's a little bit deeper here in Kelso. Guess I'm matching the weather, but thank you. Thank you everyone and God bless you.